Welcome back to Wizard Super Coach. You have to bear with me. I've kind of lost my voice a bit, uh, screaming at the footy on Saturday. Very close call for my my own team. Um, five point win, so go Hawks. But yeah, in terms of Super Coach, pretty good week. Two thousand three hundred and sixty eight uh, put me up one thousand three hundred and ninety four ranks, and so now four thousand six hundred and sixty seven. I feel like I'm kind of stuck in between that 3,000 and 5 to 6,000 mark. Um, not too unhappy with it. Like, it's it's better than I was doing last year in the same uh, period. But, yeah, I'm trying to think of a way that I can set myself apart and try and make up some ground and get inside, like, the top 2,000 ultimately. But, uh, yeah, odd week, I think. Uh few weird things happen in super coach and i'm actually pretty happy with this score it could have been a hell of a lot higher if it wasn't for flanders donut but um i'll get to that um so yeah as usual start from defense so my trades this week i bought in ryan for closey and richards for darcy wilson now if you remember my trade video, I was really tossing up about what to do there, and I wasn't, I wasn't too happy about having to get rid of Wilson, and he got eighty-one, I think. He beat that uh, break even by like five points or something. But yeah, to get these big players like Ryan, who I just couldn't go without anymore, you've got to get rid of something good. So Ryan got one thirty-two, which was really nice. It was, it was so good to watch a game. Uh, Fremantle game and see Ryan just picking it up and you know people say the way he plays is really disgusting and stuff which is fine it is but yeah I actually think he's a bit underrated I think he's quite a good defender he just doesn't always have to play that role so yeah but running back and you know sprinting 100 meters for a kick in and crap like that like it's perfect for super coach so it's good to watch if you own him if not then yeah it's been it's been hard up until now. Uh, Dacos 130. He's fully back. Back to just regular old Dacos. Houston 77. Um, he has been such a letdown since I bought him in. Now, I think I said this like last week. Those three goals that he got um, against Hawthorne, that's not going to happen often. So oh, you probably can't see this. Um but yeah, what's he gone? Since I got him, he's gone 107, 93, 89, 148, 77. So yeah, I'm not totally happy with that one, but I guess it could be a lot worse. I know a lot of people bought him in this week. I don't know why why people would. Um, obviously, he's dropped in price, but like that's a result of pretty average scoring lately. So not sure what's going on there. Uh, she's a 119 again as you as you'll notice as well this is the team as it was on the weekend i haven't touched it at all so um yeah she's uh i think he got what 117 last week so that's two weeks in a row now back to his pretty much his normal scoring um yeah he seems to be doing all right i didn't watch the game but i assume that he played that that midfield role again so it looks like he's getting the hang of it now um Hayden Young, 105. He's frustrating to watch because he's good when he's on the ground, but his time on ground is so bloody low. Um, I kind of just want Fife to get punted from the team so that Young can stay out there. Surely it's not a fitness issue because Young's not like... He's not very old, is he? I don't think he is. But yeah, uh, as I've said, I'm planning to move him um, and he'll be like that swing man between defense and midfield uh like a d7 m9 type but that will be a real luxury thing so wait and see tom stewart 110 uh it's pretty good it's definitely not the tom stewart of old but we'll take it he's been pretty horrid for the last few weeks or the last month or whatever so i was wondering if we were going to see another ton anytime soon uh when's his buy Just bear with me. So he's got the round 14 by. So I'm going to wait and see how he scores in the next two games. He's got Richmond and Sydney. He should do all right against Richmond. Sydney one's probably going to be a bit harder to score in. But um, yeah, I'm going to consider that like a 
an audition, I guess, because Sicily's cheap. Um, there's there's so many good defender options. If Stewart doesn't do any good in the next two weeks, I think on his buy he's gone because I don't see him as top six or even top eight for the rest of the year. But yeah, you never know. Um, the cream always rises, and he is pretty classy. Uh, so Zach Reed, I'm still waiting to come back, as is everyone that held him. I I don't think he'll be back anytime soon. Um, Laverde got well; he had a pretty good game on the weekend, so uh, that will hold Reed out, I think, for at least another week. Uh, obviously, I didn't see it, but I heard that Reed didn't set the world alight in the VFL either. Um, and then there's Will Graham, so he'll probably go this week. Uh, not exactly sure what I'm going to do for trades yet, but uh, I've got some ideas. And yeah, a few of them involve Graham. Uh, Sarong 91, so that's low by his standards, but for a floor game, that's fine. Butters 113. Um, he always starts off slow. I don't know what's up with him, but yeah, he's pretty consistent. Uh, Bont 135, so that, that was really good. That's like classic Bont. Uh, hopefully he goes big again this week. He's got Collingwood, so he might be worth chucking the VC on on the Friday night. Dawson, his first quarter was absolutely amazing. Now, I watched the first quarter of the game. I didn't get to see any after that, unfortunately. Um, yeah, the one time the Crom go crazy and smash a team, I only get to watch one quarter. But uh, yeah, it was nice watching that quarter and watching Dawson go berserk and then... Matty Nick sent him forward, so that's disappointing. But yeah, 158, that's great. Uh, I jumped on him at the time when people were pretty much deciding Dawson or Walsh. And I don't know, it was just gut feel with Dawson. And he's been amazing uh, pretty much since that point. So glad I got him when I did. He was nice and cheap, uh, as the experts say. And that's not me, but that's how you play Supercoach. And his mate in the midfield, Crouch, um, started him. He's been amazing. Uh, what's his... His last month has been huge. Uh, oh, Supercoach is so slow. So 118, 121, 112, 124. Like that's, that's great. He's, his lowest score for the year is 85. He's got three sub-tons and the rest have been like 110 plus. He's been an amazing starting pick. Made 77k uh, now. Um, so, yeah, originally, I thought I might uh, flip him at the buy or something like that. But no way. I'll just keep him now, I think. And, you know, if his form dips and stuff and I can accommodate it, maybe I'll get rid of him then. But he doesn't look like slowing down. So, yeah, he's here to stay, I think. Um, Petrarca, so I think I got him last week and he let me down. But yeah, this week, pretty good score. At least with Petrarca, you know he usually scores goals, so he can kind of dig himself out of a pretty average score there. Um, still a bit worried about the amount of time he's spending forward, but he can definitely go on hot streaks. We saw it last year, so happy to keep him. Jack Steele, 101. Still don't know what to make of him. I think he's playing injured. Um, he doesn't look right. He doesn't... I don't know, there's just like no intensity to him or something like that. He's another one that I was thinking about maybe getting rid of at his buy, but I don't think I'm in a position to do it now. I need to fix the forward line. Um, he's still scoring okay. I think he's had like one sub ton in the last month. Something like that. Let's have a look. I know he had the two against the shit teams. Yeah, so he got an 86 against Fremantle. In uh, so 112, 122, 86, 101. That's not bad. I got him when he was cheap anyway, so he still made 20k off his starting price. That's I don't know, that's all right. He could be doing better, but it could be worse. It could be like Tom Green, who's absolutely shit the bed now. Um, people looking to get him in, I don't know why you would bother, honestly. He kind of reminds me of like Rao with less scoring avenues, like. Rao's better at the contested ball than Green, but Green can't hit targets and shit like that, and he's just real frustrating. Like, there's a reason why he's dropped so far. I know there was that game with the five, but 
Um, yeah, he just doesn't look right at the moment. And to be honest, I don't care what he's priced at next year unless he's heaps cheap. I'm not starting him. Kind of seen enough. Um, I want players that have, you know, score goals, more scoring avenues. So, you know, like Petrarca, I said he can he can pull himself out of an average score with a couple of goals and stuff. Green doesn't do that. So, and yeah, the uh, disposal efficiency really lets him down. Uh, Sullivan, 88. That was great. I think he was the one who handed the ball back to his teammate, not the umpire, that whole debacle. But yeah, still scored an 88, which is really good. Um, he's going to make plenty of cash and he's going to be nice to field through the buyers. Uh, Clark finally put up another good score. What a roller coaster that guy is. Um, and got himself rubbed out for a week, which honestly was one of the weakest bloody calls I've ever seen. I don't think he should have got rubbed out. And I don't give a shit if he's in my super coach or not. I'm not being biased when I say that. But yeah, terrible de decision there to rub him out. Um, but, you know, Geelong didn't contest it. So maybe it's maybe it's the right call. I don't know. But yeah, um, what's his break even now? It'd be easy to just do this, wouldn't it? So break even of 15. The way he's been scoring, though, he'll be lucky to make his break even next time he plays because that's what he does. He goes like 80, 10, 80, 10. Um, so Max Gorn, 180. He is definitely the king. He's the number one player in Supercoach this year. Um, it feels good to have started him. I know everyone did, but, you know. Yeah, just so reliable and... Yeah, I don't know. From this point, it feels like if he's got the early game, it doesn't matter who his opponent is. You'd just be wanting to put the VC on him because not many players... Well, I don't think there's any other player, to be honest, that gets those massive scores so frequently. It's, it feels like probably every four weeks or something he pumps out one of these. So, yeah, the king is back. Um, English, not so much. I mean, 100's okay, but... Yeah, for a player like that, you want him to be getting higher. He's had a pretty low few weeks. Um, he's still R2 over the season, but I don't don't know if he's going to like be R2 from here. Obviously, it only matters about uh, who's scoring the most points from the point you get them in. So, um, yeah, what's done is done. And from here on, I think Marshall will outscore him and maybe Grundy, even Meek maybe. I don't know. Um, Jordan Sweet, so he might be at the end now. And, uh, 74, so he's made 150k. He's done his job. Um, if Soldo comes in, I don't know whether to get rid of him straight away or what. Probably need to, to fix up the forward line. Um, because of Richards with his injury. So, I think Port would be stupid though to bring Soldo back one week before the buy. They got the round... 14 don't they or no sorry round 13 by yeah yeah so you, surely you'd give soldo the extra week and just keep sweet in for another week is that just wishful think thinking or what um i don't know but yeah he's done his job so whenever he goes that's fine so livingston will go back to r3 as the loophole and yeah sweet can become a forward so I can get Richards on the bench. I'm not going to get rid of Richards. He hasn't made enough money. Plus, we know he can score. He should come back in at some point. Um, Heaney, 94. So is that his lowest of the season? Uh, yes. So only the two sub-tons. 94 and 98. That's fine. You know, if that's the worst we got to deal with, that's, that's absolutely fine. Reminds me of Bont last year. Although I think he only went the one sub ton. Um, so I'll let him off. He better not do it again though. So this one was the annoying one because as I said, I would have had a really good score if this donut hadn't happened. So as I said, I traded in Ryan and Richards. So by the time Flanders was the late out on Saturday Arvo, um, I couldn't reverse my trades or do anything about it. So was running the loop here. Garcia would come in for Jones. So as you can see, I had no way of trying to cover that loop. I think I actually subbed Flanders for Garcia in the hope that maybe, you know, Garcia would be a late in or something like that. Like, 
wasn't going to happen, but, you know, just to be safe. Anyway, yeah, Flanders should be back next week and scoring tons again. Darcy was really disappointing, 42. Uh, I think he's got to go. But I also think Fife's got to go, and so does Graham. So, I don't know. A boost would have been nice at this point, but, you know, I got greedy and used them all earlier in the year. So, it is what it is. One of them will be going. Um, I think Darcy probably... I think he'll struggle against Collingwood's defence because if... I don't know if Frampton's going to be back there, but we know Moore is, like, ruck size, and so is Frampton. So it's not like one of those smaller defences, like, say, uh, the Crom or something, where they've got, like, you know, the key defenders are, like, 195 centimetres or whatever. The Collingwood ones are, like, 200, that kind of thing. So I don't think Darcy can just outreach them like he does. He's not very strong either, so... I'm going to tip that, um, well, he's certainly not going to make his break even against them. I would I would think 95, but I don't think he'll get anywhere near it. I think he'll pump out like another 40 or something. So he'll probably be the one to go. I mean, yeah, it's more likely that that, hap- that happens like a 40 from Darcy than Fife going real low against Melbourne because Melbourne midfield at the moment is not what it was. And I mean, if, you know, West Coast is beaten up on it, then... Two-time Brownlow medalist shouldn't have too much of a problem at least winning some contested ball and pumping out a 70 or something like that. So that's the way I'm looking at it. I'll probably be wrong, but he's, I think Supercoach has played a probability. So Fife, he was also shit on the weekend. Um, I don't know, he just looks burnt at the moment, like burnt out or something. Um, yeah, don't know what to do with him. Probably just hold him till he's by and Oh, whatever, you know, hopefully a rookie's presented by then he can go or he can become like maybe ranking in a couple of weeks. Richard's 100, that was absolutely amazing. Um, He's just everywhere on the field. Like he was playing forward, but was getting around the whole field. So that was really good to see. And now he has sustained a foot injury and will be out for like four to five weeks. So... Yay, isn't Supercoach fun? Uh, So Garcia, 83. He's been such a good pick. Like, he's really flown under the radar. I don't think enough people are talking about Garcia. So obviously, um, he was the the loop here that come in for Jones. But like, his scoring... I apologise, I set the the screen size wrong here so you, you can't see. But, uh... Yeah, like every second week he's scoring at 80, basically. So, and to do it against Sydney, that's that's pretty good. So yeah, he's made 170k now. And he's got a break even of 38, which he should make. So, happy to hold him a bit longer. He hasn't even been bevoed yet. Um, Someone's going to get bevoed, though. Like, liver's coming back, so weird shit's going to happen. Could be, um, or oh, how do you say it? Is it... F- Freya or Frasier, I don't know, Friger. Everyone's had a stab at that one, but yeah, well, I feel like one of them is going to get um get bevoed. Bont will probably get sent to full forward now to cover Norton, shit like that. Um, so I'll change this. Now in terms of trades this week, um, the defense. I'm just trying to get like rookies off the field. So the defense right now is full primo, if you count Stewart, who's bit of a fraud at the moment um and the midfield same thing um obviously got a couple in there who are masquerading as primos uh jury's out on them but uh yeah sullivan will cover green nicely i think and then yeah up forward so let's see what have i got for for the way i got one two three four five Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I guess. Hang on. Fifteen primos. Um. I think nineteen in total. Nineteen players playing total. So, because I can, this is like a bit out there, and it kind of goes against what everyone else is doing, but because. Because I can accommodate it this week, I'm thinking of getting rid of Graham for 
uh, Dawson uh, of the North Melbourne variety. The 117K rookie. So I think he's on the bubble, isn't he? Let's see down here. Oh, people are getting Frazier in too. Still, wow. Yeah, so Will Dawson. What's his... He's played two, I'm sure. He has played two. So that other score wasn't great, but, you know, if you can get like a 79 against Port, that's not too bad. Um, So I was thinking of him in for Graham and then maybe Darcy out for Zach Fisher. Even though I'm not 100% convinced on Fisher, um, he is scoring well. I just I kind of want to see how he goes when McCurch is back which could be real soon, but I also don't want to wait. Now, you're probably thinking, why would I want to bring in two buy players this week? Like, why would I want to bring them in on their buy? Well, it doesn't matter who I bring in this week, right? They're going to be missing a game over the buys from here. Someone's going to be missing a game. So because I've got only, what, one, two, three players missing this week, I feel like I can accommodate that easily and bring those two in and sit them on the bench because I've still got like 19 or whatever playing and a whole bunch of primos. And then for the weeks where I'm going to be a lot shorter, those two can help big time. So if we look at round 13, no, that's easy because that's just the port and free mental ones. But again, see, that will, that will help. Like if Fife is still there and he hasn't been traded, which he probably will be, but uh, Fisher can sit in there. Um, Fisher also can go back. This is where... This is where these two really help is because Dawson is forward defence, so him in for Graham gives me a link between Fisher and Dawson to cover. Um, so the round 14, like I'm, I planned for the buyers big time to try and make up ground. And as you can see, like it's quite well spread out, I think. The last one's going to be the hardest, obviously, but um, by then I will have traded in guys that don't have that buy so that should be it should be covered um and as i said the two north melbourne boys will have already had their buy this week when i can easily accommodate it so it's probably not as crazy as it sounds obviously it's dependent on your team and how your buy structure is and all that that kind of thing but that's what i'm thinking um i guess the same goes for zorko I could just get Zorko in this week if I could afford it. Um, how much money have I got? I don't think I've got much left. Yeah, so like two grand, but... Yeah, if I could afford Zorko somehow, I'm planning on getting him the week after, obviously, like when he's off his buy. Um, but yeah, it'd be the same with him. He just wouldn't have that link that uh, the North Melbourne ones have with the DPP. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I've, obviously, I've got to bring someone in for the forward line. Um, I can worry about getting an on-field replacement for Richards next week, I think. That will most likely be... Um, so, let's see. Yeah, that will almost certainly, I reckon, be Jordan Sweet out. Livingston back to R3, and then I'll get... Um, yeah, another forward, and Richards can just sit on the bench until he's back, because I absolutely love what I uh, saw with him. So, yeah, he can stick around. Yeah, I think that's about all I've got. Um, I'm quite happy with where the team is, is and it's headed. I think the thing that was holding me back was not having Ryan. Um, that was one of the big ones. Um, but yeah, as I said, I planned for the buys. Now it's going to be the big test because this is where I plan to make up ground. Um, if It seems fairly well balanced and spread out. If I can fix the forward line, it'll be absolutely humming, I think. Um, got to have some faith, even though the game keeps kicking us in the guts but yeah let me know how you did and how you're planning for the buys um happy to answer any questions that anyone has i mean i don't normally give advice but uh yeah take it with a grain of salt you, it's all about how you process advice really than the advice itself so yeah let me know in the comments what you think if you think i'm insane with the uh the plan this week but uh yeah thanks for watching and I will almost certainly do a trade video again 
this week. So I'll see you in that one.